What's up? It's the Sound Alchemist, and I'm sitting here on a chair next to a chair sitting Gershwan. And today we're back at it, answering your questions from all across the globe in another episode of For the Greater yeah. I didn't know you were going to do the lean. Um, <laughs> Probably because I'm on lean. Oh. oh. Uh, this is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, simply comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because we get to those questions first. That is what Spartan A111 did. He asks, what would happen if Necron stumbled upon a prison that holds the men of iron and upgrade them? And how would they view each other? So the, if, I think if the Necrons found the Men of Iron, the Men of Iron would not be friendly towards the Necrons, and the Necrons wouldn't be friendly towards the Men of Iron. I think they would fight and destroy each other. Right. But, but, you did say that's they, um, and upgraded them. So let's say that they did. Let me upgrade you. It is actually known that uh, Necrons have taken champions or, or, or like organisms and actually tried to improve on their own technology using the, the template of, of whatever they're fighting. The best example for that are pariahs, I think they're called? Well, I don't think they're a thing anymore, but yeah. Okay, yeah, so they're not at all? No, they're, they're, they weren't in the codex and they kind of took out that whole slice of lore out. Ah, okay. Well, then in that case, no. <laughs> Way to rain on your parade, Gersh. Uh, yeah, and then the reason for that too is like Necron technology is far more superior than um, uh, old age technology during the golden age of, of right. humanity. I mean, no matter what, I feel like Necron tech would always surpass um, the Men of Iron tech. Yeah, so if the Men of Iron fought the Necrons, the Necrons would be would win. Um, but I mean, based on that, wouldn't the Necrons beat everything because they've got like the best tech out of anything? Um, okay, so <laughs> yeah, the, the Men of Iron could win if like the, the Tomb World is slowly rising. But I, again, if I think if like the Necrons all of a sudden just like turned on and all of them rose up at the same time, mm -hmm. got their shit together and went after, you know, got a job, started paying child support, all that good stuff, I think humanity would be destroyed. Yeah, easily. But I mean, I I mean, if the Necrons are slowly rising up, I think after four hours they gotta go see a doctor. Because I mean, anything... it's not four hours. Yeah, every, if it's if you have it for longer than four hours, you gotta see a doctor. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm fact checking. <laughs> I feel like he's had it for longer than four hours, and I'm fine. <laughs> so I don't know. You're just it's funny because I can see like your blood just burning. <laughs> Why are you so squishy? <laughs> Next question. Bunny Hop! What's your favorite demon model? It's a good one. Hmm. Hmm. I've always liked blood letters because they look so like, like demon-like actually. Uh, but I have to go with the bloodthirster. Bloodthirster. More beefy winged version of a blood letter. I really like the, um, what are the rhino looking guys? The juggernauts? The juggernauts. Yeah, those, those are, are my favorite cool. demons. Yeah. I actually have some, and I'm going to convert some Chaos Space Marines. Um, next question goes from Nader Potato. Hmm. Uh, what would happen if the Dark Eldar and Necrons battled? Would the Dark Eldars take any prisoners? I think they would, yeah. just for fun. Right. I mean, Necrons don't feel pain, but I, I'm pretty sure they would. They could always use them as, like, um, tools to inflict pain on other people. Mm-hmm. These are like atom demolishers to like slowly rip apart their prisoners. Yeah, or take some flayed ones and like put them in a box and then whenever they capture people, throw the people in the flayed box box. And uh, yeah, get, they get flayed. Next question. Ricky Montesinos. What is your favorite Chaos Space Marine Warband and what do you think of the Alpha Legion? The Alpha Legion is probably my favorite Legion. Their lore is absolutely amazing. From the very beginning, they were the epitome of all Space Marine Legions because they were the 20th Legion. So they were supposedly like the ones that were gonna be held back in reserve. And if you know the story of the, what are they called? Um, during the Unification War, 
what were they, the Spartans called? The Thunder Warriors? Yeah, the Thunder Warriors. If you know the Thunder Warriors, they were gonna, they eventually were killed. And I feel like the Emperor would have killed off the Legions, starting from one, so Dark Angels, moving all the way to the 20th Legion, and the 20th Legion was supposed to be like the, the cream of the crop. A theory. Just theory. Yeah, I mean, Alpha Legion's always cool. Uh, for a while, uh, back when I was, when I haven't done my Chaos Space Marine Legion, I was actually thinking about starting either a Thousand Suns or an Alpha Legion um, Chaos Warband. Because, I mean, their models are pretty cool, even though they don't really have anything like... I guess they're Forge Road models, is what I mean. Because there's no specific Alpha Legion model in 40k. Um, it's all like 30k stuff, so... Armillus Dynat, that's a really cool model. That's actually what my uh, Space Marine Captain was converted from. So yeah, Alpha Legion is definitely a cool legion. That was his question? Well, that was the second half of his question. Oh, it was the first part. Uh, what's our favorite Chaos Legion? Oh, okay. Um, or Chaos Warband. <clears throat> That's a tough one, it changes. Yeah, I, right now I'd say Thousand Suns. But like 30k. Well, no, because then they, they weren't. Yeah, they were just red. red. Yeah, I guess Thousand Suns. Uh, I like the, um, currently, currently, I like the uh, Iron Warriors, because I like, like, yellow and black stripes. Hazard. Yeah. <laughs> this question was not labeled question, but I'm going to, uh, well, Augustus Anderson says, hey, since you like my last name, why don't you answer my question about the Necrons being trapped in ice by a Hellfrost cannon? What's the question? You didn't put the question. Like, oh, can I they be... Frozen in... Yeah, they can be frozen in ice. Yeah. I mean, because that's what Hellfrost weapons do. They freeze you. They not. They don't necessarily kill you unless you die from, like, hypothermia. Well, they, they kill you. <laughs> yeah. It's like saying, oh, I'm not killing you. The gun is. Well, the gun's not killing you. The bullet is. Well, the bullet's not killing you. You bleeding out is killing you. And that's... Gun rights explain. <laughs> um, uh, but, yeah, Hellfrost weapons do work on Necrons... Um, just because they're not fleshy, they're not, they don't have like bones and stuff like that, doesn't mean they won't die. Right. But, if you freeze a Necron, and then you unfreeze it, will it still be alive? No, it'll just be thawed. Yeah, it'll still be alive. Well, I mean, were they ever dead to begin with? No, they're just frozen. So technically, if you do freeze a whole Necron world, you kind of won. Because then the Necrons can't go back to their tomb world to be reconstructed because <coughs> everything's frozen. Right. So I guess that's one way of beating the Necrons? Or I guess, like, holding them off? Yeah, but, like, you would never be able to do that because, like, you would have to freeze the entire planet. Right. And, like, I'm pretty sure that Necrons developed something within the tomb world, not the warriors, but the tomb world, that could survive. Um, like, really bad, cold... High temperatures. Low temperatures, sorry. Next question. This is an interesting one. Timothy Birnbaum. When you said that the Adeptus Custodes were many Primarchs and thus could not be corrupted, but the Primarchs themselves were corrupted, so how does this make sense? You're thinking about it too much. Just move on. <laughs> just, just go with the flow. You know the reason that the Orcs are so successful is because they don't bother to stop and ask questions. They don't ask why. Yeah, they just keep going. They're not like, who is Gamora? What is Gamora? Why is Gamora? They just know Gamora. But what was your question? Oh, so he's, just, he's saying... Because our reasoning was like, Adeptus Custodes can't get corrupted <clears throat> because they're supposed to be like mini Primarchs and whatnot. But the Primarchs themselves, obviously half of them were corrupted. Yeah, but then you also look at have to look at the upbringing of a Primarch. From the very beginning, they were touched by chaos. They were sent to other places. And the Duchess Custodes, Custodes did not have that. He was born on Terra, raised on Terra, went exploring, came back. So that's way different than like being sent to Nostromo or, uh, you know, Fenris. It's all about nature and nurture, and you kind of have to know about that before we, you know, you begin to grasp the idea of an Adeptus Custodes. Because the, the Adeptus Custodes are basically privileged, and then the prim Primarchs are like the kids who grew up in the hood. Kinda, yeah. <laughs> kind of like uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The Primarchs are Will Smith, and 
the, the Adeptus Custodius are Carlton. <laughs> Carlton. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't, it shouldn't. And they got good abs. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Have you seen um, Carlton without a shirt on? <laughs> Anyways, I'm just saying. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is basically 40k. Next question. <laughs> Oh, uh, this one's by <laughs> Colton Batter. My friend just proposed a theory to me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to take that in a different yeah. way. What if Gork and Mork aren't actually gods, just manifestations of all the orcs' emotions slash adrenaline? This goes back to the fact that if so many orcs believe something, it will be true. Thanks for the videos, guys. You are awesome. Uh, so, well, well yeah. You're right. Because they are. Because Gork and Mork is just a manifestation of what the orc... orc energy and the culture of the orcs has created um the old ones who created the crocs did not create the, the orc gods those orc gods were created based off of the energy that was <coughs> emitted by the soon-to-be orcs uh, so in a way yeah you're the second part of that is right and gork and mork they're not actual like people or orcs if that makes sense they're just an idea yeah a thought. Yeah. And ideas never die. Unless you have people that stop thinking about them. <coughs> yeah. Next question. That was the name? No. Oh. <laughs> Next question comes from Adam99. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> if Fulgrim... Uh, it's gone. Well, basically, you were, you're asking, is if Fulgrim came back, would it be better for him to come back as a demon or as a clone who helps Gilliman? Fulgrim demon is way better. Yeah. Fulgrim demon has a snake tail, wings, and swords. And like he's, six arms with swords in them. That would be an amazing model to just have. Mm -hmm. If you think Magnus the Red is awesome, which he is, um, Fulgrim would be like twice as badass. If you want to see like a, what a model may look like, they released uh, the Marathi, I think that's what they're called, in uh, Age of Sigmar, and they've converted one of the models to look like Fulgrim. So. Yeah. yeah. Those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, or if we didn't get to your question, comment down below. Understand that we are trying to get to as many of your questions as we can, um, so just keep, keep, keep sending them questions our way. And of course, don't forget, we got a Patreon page. That's what helps us bring you more 40K videos each and every day. So don't forget to check out all the other Instagram, social media sites we got. And uh, yeah, thanks for everything. Keep doing what you're doing. This is the Sound Alchemist. Gersh 1. And we are out of here.